Well, good evening and welcome to Casa Bacardi and the Institute for Cuban and Cuban American Study. Uh, we have a, a very important forum tonight to discuss the situation in Venezuela, the implications of a change in Venezuela for Cuba, and the effect on the U.S. policy and what kind of a policy the U.S. should follow. We have a very distinguished panel. Uh, Dr. Latell, Brian Latell, will talk about the lessons that Cuba has learned in its foreign involvement. Uh, Dr. Roy will be talking about the uh, involvement of Cuba in Venezuela. Uh, Dr. Azel will be talking about the implications of the changes in Venezuela for Cuba and whether an end to the Chavista regime in Venezuela will have an impact and what kind of an impact on Cuba. And lastly, Dr. Uh, Susan Kaufman Purcell, which is a little late, but she will be here, will be talking about U.S. policy and what are the options for the U.S. Uh, as all of you that follow uh, Venezuela know and understand the situation continues to deteriorate. The uh, repressive apparatus of the Maduro regime continues to attack the peaceful pro protest of the Venezuelans. It has spread not only to students, but now non-students are also involved in the protests against the regime. I don't know how this is going to end or where it's leading, but I thought of coming up or I came up with nine scenarios of how the situation in Venezuela may evolve. And um, very quickly, I'm going to go through it. Uh, scenario one, a continuation of the violence uh, for an indefinite period of time. Scenario two, uh, Maduro is replaced as a token gesture to the opposition and probably replaced for Diosdado by Diosdado Cabello. So the same system with a different name and a different head. Third <clears throat> possible scenario, a compromise where the government and the opposition get together, they call for new elections, and things quiet down. Fourth scenario, the military splits uh, we have seen that there's been some splits within the Chavista group, so it is possible that the military will take one position or the other one, and this may develop into a bloody civil war. The fifth scenario is that of a growing Cuban involvement. We have information that the Minister of Interior of Cuba has sent some of his special troops to Caracas in the past three days. So Cuba's involvement in Venezuela may grow uh, in different fo forms. It, it's possible, as a sixth scenario, that Cuba would organize international brigades, uh, volunteers from uh, Nicaragua, uh, Bolivia, Ecuador, to go fight to defend the uh, Bolivarian Revolution. So that is a, uh, a, a fifth, sixth scenario. The seventh one is one that I think uh, is less likely, but I am a little concerned about it, which is a Russian-Iranian involvement in Venezuela. Not necessarily militarily, but with a presence, sending naval ships to uh, Venezuela, uh, making statements, and maybe Putin wants a payoff uh, President Obama for what's happening in Ukraine by becoming more involved in Venezuela. So that, that is a possible scenario. And the eighth one is that the opposition is crushed. In 1959-60 in Cuba, there was significant opposition against the Castro regime, demonstrations, violence, there were guerrilla warfare, and the Castro regime was able to brutally end that kind of uprising and assassinate a lot of the leaders, execute them, and calm down and consolidated power. And the ninth and final uh, possible scenario is that the opposition wins and there is a new regime, democratic regime, in Venezuela. Now, I am concerned about the role of the U.S. And many or some of my colleagues uh, feel that the U.S. should not get involved in Venezuela 
that uh, the Venezuelan petroleum is not as important to the United States as it was five, ten years ago, that we are almost self-sufficient, that we don't need Venezuelan petroleum, that we should leave them alone and let them find their own way. I'm more concerned that the United States should get involved. I think that this is a historical moment for American foreign policy in Latin America. Mm -hmm. The overthrow of the Chavista regime will reverse the trend toward leftism in Latin America, will, re will weaken those regimes that are dependent on Venezuela, such as uh, Nicaragua, uh, uh, Bolivia, and particularly Cuba. I think it's very important for U.S. to exercise some sort of a leadership. And I'm not advocating intervention. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a series of policies that the United States can exercise to influence events in Venezuela and to bring about the end of the Chavista era. So uh, these are just a few thoughts, and I wanted to kick them off. And I'll pass it on to Dr. Latell so he can illustrate you. <laughs> You've covered the whole territory. What well, good? Hi. <laughs> 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 <laughs>